Hello to all my lovely subscribers and new viewers. Thanks for clicking on this link. Today you'll be viewing a very anticipated and well requested tutorial on Sketchbook Pro version 6.0. As some of you may already know, there is already a Sketchbook Pro tutorial in my videos, but I've gotten quite a bit of negative feedback due to my constant pausing and stuttering due to nerves. And for that, a new and improved video has been made. I'd like to take the time to apologize for making a video that had so many flaws, but this time, I have a script! <laughs> so without further ado, I present the basics of Sketchbook Pro, the updated tutorial. And as always, if you like what you're watching, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Happy drawing, and good luck! Alright, so first we have a toolbar, which pretty self-explanatory, your bar of tools that you can use throughout your drawing. Next we have the brush palette which holds all the brushes in the program um, and you can change the settings in the brush palette. Next you have your lagoon which I think is like a corner of shortcuts but I honestly I never use it at all. Next you have your color wheel. Simple, choose your colors. Then you have your brush puck, which allows you to change the size of the brushes. And then the new feature, which is the color puck, allows you to change the opacity and such. We'll go over that in a bit. Um, next you have your layer editor, which is managing your layers. And finally, your Copic library, different uh, colors. All right, so in your toolbar, you have the undo and the redo, pretty self-explanatory. Then you have your select, which is the selecting of the uh, larger image. And then the lasso select, which allows you to select more specific um, portions of your image. Then we have the crop, which crops your entire canvas, so just be careful with that. And then you have the moving and zooming of the entire canvas itself. This is here the um, moving and zooming of your actual image. Then you have your text tool, which allowed me to get that um, font there that you see. And then we have rulers, straight ruler, we have the eclipse ruler, the French curve, which is a new aspect of um, Sketchbook Pro series, I suppose. Um, there's three kinds of them. This is the first one. Press the button. There's the second one. And you press the button again. There is the third one. Go ahead and play with those. They're pretty cool. Next, you have the symmetry and your other symmetry. I was playing around with that earlier in the beginning of my tutorial for your entertainment. I hope I didn't butcher that pronouncing this time. But go ahead and play with that. I think it's a pretty cool uh, feature to have and to play with. Next you have your freehand tool. Do whatever you want. And then you have the, um, I believe it is called, where is it? Steady stroke. Yeah, sorry. Steady, tro steady stroke is amazing play with this. The longer your tail, the more steady your stroke will be. The less your tail, the less steady. And you can see I'm demonstrating, um, I was going all the same uh, speed, and you'll see that there's different um, steadiness in those lines. Then you have your lines, your rectangles, your polyline, double click to end, and your uh, ovals. Up here, make up here the layers, brush palette, colors, and Copic. Okay, so in the brush palette, here we have all the regular brushes that were in the first edition of Sketchbook Pro. This is the uh, Copic edition brushes that came with Copic um, Sketchbook Pro Copic. It's SBC. Um, next, these are the new brushes that came. They are called the smudge brushes. Um, these, I believe, were in the first one, and then these on the bottom were in the first one. Um, here I'm just demonstrating, uh, the different textures that these, um, new brushes give. Uh, they're really cool. I don't use them just because I don't really, uh, paint with, um, Sketchbook Pro, but... I think they're really, really cool. I think you could get some really cool textures from them. So make sure you play around with them. If um, you click on the right on the upper bar there, you'll be able to see all the brushes. And then on the left, you'll see the properties. 
double click a brush you'll be able to change uh, settings on a brush here we have a new feature um, this is the hue randomizer it changes the colors with every uh, mark that you make it's it's pretty cool I I think it would get very annoying for me if I'm you know I'm trying to make art and keep changing the color but you know something really cool just to play around with um, next oh a lot of people ask what do you use for you know what pencils do you use or you know tools my pencil the default pencil I use for sketching the default airbrush tool I use for my shading and the hard pencil default as well I use that for my line art so Lagoon all it is is a corner that allows you to choose everything available in the program without having to have all the individual windows open um, it, this is just easier and more convenient if you want less clutter going on in your screen so here we have the color wheel versus the actual color wheel then we have the sliders the then the just regular palettes then you have the image where you can just pick um, different images out of and then you have the crayons these are all just different ways and options of viewing the colors you have available um, you're able to change the size that you look at your colors and then there's a little tiny circle that if you drag it down you have this box where has a bunch of white boxes this is for just in case if you're drawing and you come across a color that you created that you really liked you go ahead and you click on the little magnifying glass and you put it onto the color that you liked then it will show you click on it and drag it down into the white spot and you will have it there for as long as you need it to be here we have the brush and the color puck on the left you have the brush puck on the right you have the color puck which is new to Sketchbook Pro on the left brush puck if you go left and right you will change the size of your brush and then up and down will change the opacity which is how light and dark on the color puck go left and right you'll change the saturation of your brush and if you go up and down it will change the luminance of the color which is you know lights and darks of the exact same color that you just had Alright, so here we have the layer editor. First option, you can add a layer. Second, you can add a text layer, which is also in the toolbar. Then you can also add an image to your layer. And then next, you have clear layer, which will clear everything that you have done on that layer. This is new here. If you go ahead and click on the arrows, it will allow you to change the type of layer that you have. Then you have the lock transparency, which is just a little symbol that looks like a lock. And then this is new. You can change the color of the layer. It's just an easier way to organize. Slide it up and down on that bar there, and it will change the opacity of your layer. And then here, I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit of the... Um, multiply feature I'm not gonna go too much into this because I do have an entire video dedicated to layers so if you want to go ahead and check that out go into my videos and check it out um, it's a layers tutorial so go ahead and take your image if you go ahead and you color on top of it you will see that the color will be right on top go ahead and multiply that image and then if you create a new layer making sure that the multiplied image is on top and you color on top of the new layer that is underneath the multiplied image you will be able to color your pictures this is great that if you saved a aligner that you did a while back ago you can go ahead and you can now color it without it getting on top of your actual line art go ahead and lock your transparency on that color and you'll be able to color inside what you've already done so that ends the tutorial. I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to me. I've had over 2,000 people subscribe, which is absolutely mind-blowing for me. Um, if you guys don't already know, I'm a tattoo artist. So if you guys are interested in seeing some tattoo work and uh, just some art, 
go ahead and add me on Facebook, facebook.com slash supergeek, two hours, and follow me on Instagram at supergeek with two hours. Thank you guys so much. I love you all and have a fantastic day.